Well, beloved dub dub motherfuckers, what is going on, everyone? It is I, everyone's favorite jack of all trades, with the foul mouth, coming to Urban. Welcome back to another awesome fucking video, guys. I greatly do appreciate it. And before we dive into this bitch, I want to give a big shout out to all of you guys, my viewers, and my subscribers for sticking around watching this shit. That's the reason why I fucking do this for all you guys, so yeah. And also, the 1000 sub QA is coming up. So if you've not asked me any questions yet, please leave them in the video, please. I need questions, because I won't do it very soon. And, uh, yeah. As you can see here, this beautiful lady you see here is the USS New Jersey, as she is depicted from the anime series slash Gauntra game, Azure Lane. And, uh, we're going to be talking about the USS New Jersey. Before I dive in to what I'm going to do, big shout out to head curator of the USS New Jersey Museum, uh, Ryan Zelensky, you know. He does a pretty awesome shit on, his, on the YouTube channel. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below to the YouTube channel, the USS New Jersey's official YouTube channel. So go check his shit out and stuff. It's awesome. So if you ever see this Mr. Zelensky, fucking thank you so much. And it's just awesome shit you do over there. So anyway, reason why we're talking about... Chart 25 of Orbe. The reason why we're talking about the Black Dragon is because... We are reviewing this book titled Battleship New Jersey An Illustrated History by Paul Stilwell. And on the front cover, we've got this amazing picture of her firing her guns off of Vietnam, which you can tell this is her during Vietnam. Anyway, Paul Stilwell is also the author of Battleship Arizona. An illustrated history as well. He also wrote the book Battleship Missouri as well. Anyway, recommissioned into active U.S. fleet in late 1982, the Battleship New Jersey is one of the world's best known and most publicized ships. Ironically, she is one of the oldest warships still in active, still in service, but after a major overhaul, she is also one of the most modern in terms of weapon systems and electronics. Despite changes, however, she continues to possess the mystique and aurora that accompany the great battleships of old and still inspires awe and affection. The New Jersey has a long and impressive history. During World War II, she was the flagship for Admiral Raymond Spruance, which he also was the, made the flagship out of the USS Indianapolis, and Admiral William Bolhausi. During the Korean War, she was recommissioned to provide shore bombardment after peacetime service as a midshipman training ship and an overseas transport ship, the New Jersey was mothballed. During the Vietnam War, she was recalled once more, making her the only U.S. battleship to participate in three wars. During the U.S. presence off Lebanon in 1983-84, she was called upon to fire her guns in anger once again. The author who served in the crew of the New Jersey in 1969 here contributes an operational history of the ship with an inside perspective of what it was been like to live and serve on board over the years. He has interviewed more than 130 former crew members including all of her still living commanding officers in conjunction with ship's logs and other unofficial uh, other records. Fuck. These interviews provide an unparalleled view of warship life. The narrative begins with Kiel Lang in 1940 and covers the text of events up to the spring of 1986. More than 350 photographs complement the text to show the New Jersey throughout her career. The ship's numerous changes are evident. Many of these illustrations, which are also pictures of the crew, are from the private collections have never before been published. Twelve large line drawings, profiles, and deck plans show the ship's configuration in 1943, 1953, 1969, and 1983. There are a number of detailed views of various parts of the ship as well as an inboard profile. This book will set a new standard for publications dealing with the history of a warship, a visual treat for the naval enthusiast, a um, unique source of reference for model makers. It provides fascinating reading. And my god, this book is absolutely fucking awesome. It is. It is absolutely like... It deals with the New Jersey's history from the time when she was built until the time when she was recommissioned again and up until like 1986-1987. Now, as we, we all know, she's not in service now today. 
even though there have been rumblings in Washington about the possibility of bringing one or two of the Iowas back out to go blast the sand diggers, the little sand crawlers over in the Middle East, the Hoofies, to blow those little fuckers of Kingdom Come. Which, if it was up to me, I'd say go for it. Anyway, the contents of this book include from the drawing board to warship, World War II, everything except the battleship, post-war doldrums, Korea midshipmen in Korea again, the in-between years, peacetime and liberty ports, politics and the Vietnam War, from mothballs to Lebanon, and the battleship battle group. And the information you will gain from this book is absolutely just incredible. Uh, Paul Stelwell, like with his Arizona book, did a fucking amazing job also telling the story of the Big J, as she was known as. She actually had several nicknames during her career. And the Big J, uh, the Jersey, and one that is, she was also known as the Black Dragon. And there's a reason why she's known as the Black Dragon. I'll explain that here. But a lot of these pictures, if you're a model maker, like me, a model builder, they're just absolutely fucking stunning pictures. And I want to share with you some information out of this book. And I believe this happened probably around September of 1950, not 53, but September 1943 is when I think this happened. The New Jersey was coming back to the Philadelphia Naval Yard for some reconstruction work, including having her bridge enclosed, as you can see here. It was redid later on to match her sister, Missouri, and Wisconsin, but uh, she got stuck in the um, in the uh, Delaware River, and she, you know, it was a pretty bad deal. It says, if the whole situation was bewildering down below, it had its frightening aspects topside, particularly for one shipyard worker who was in a restroom at the end of the pier at the end of Pier 4. When the stern grounded in the mud, the bow of the New Jersey swung around and headed for the restroom. The worker inside saw the bow coming toward him and went tearing out of the place with his trousers still at half-mast. He escaped before the structure was smashed by the bow. Finally, the ship was pulled under control and mourned to the dock, but the whole episode wasn't quite over. During the yard period which followed the New Jersey's arrival in Philadelphia, a sturdy metal shield was built on the ship's bow to protect the crews of two 20mm machine guns being installed there. After the shield was completed, someone in the crew painted on the outside of it the silhouette of an old-fashioned outhouse, much as other ships painted silhouettes of enemy ships sunk or plane shot down. The captain heard about it, and the outhouse symbol was quickly painted over. Division officers then went around asking who had done the painting. Oscar Gray remembers that everyone responded with an astonished who, me, an imaginary halo above his head. <laughs> so basically they painted a shitter on her because she fucking smashed it. Anyway, um, there's actually another really awesome picture here too, if I find it. Um, right here. Here's what she was known as, the Black Dragon. There's a picture of her. It says, the New Jersey's dark gray paint and fire belching 16 inch guns were the basis for her wartime nickname, the Black Dragon. This one of the few World War II pictures showing the ship firing her 16 inch guns in anger was taken during the bombardment of Tinian in mid June of 1944. That's why she's known as the Black Dragon, is because of, of that, guys. And another really interesting thing about this ship is actually an encounter she had in 1952. It says on the 30th of July, the New Jersey an escort destroyers approached the English Channel, and then one of the radar men announced that he was tracking a skunk. It was a surface contact that was designated, headed toward the New Jersey at a speed of 40 knots. One of the watch officers announced that it had to be a bogey, which was an air contact, because no skunk could go that fast. After some double checking, the watch officer finally became convinced that it was a surface ship and relayed the war to the officer of the deck on the bridge. More incredibly, surface, yeah, you know, surface there until finally the realization came that this must be the new passenger liner United States. 
which had set the transatlantic speed record during her maiden voyage early in the month. The radar also showed another large contact coming alongside the United States. So, and basically, and basically the United States passed in New Jersey, they saluted each other and they passed their ways. I think that's really fucking cool. The New Jersey saluted the Big U and the Big U saluted the Jersey. That would have been, I wish I could have saw that fucking, that would have been awesome. That actually would be a really fucking awesome drawing to do, guys. But, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of interesting details and stuff in this book. And so many wonderful pictures. That's what makes this book such, such a treasure trove. Is all of the fucking pictures that's included. And it's not just pictures of the ship during one period or another. It's throughout her entire fucking life. And something else that's interesting too is that pictures of the Wisconsin after she collided with the destroyer Eaton. This is where she got the nickname Whiskey because of these part of the bow of the stillborn Kentucky. Because see there's Wisconsin with her torn bow. That is um, Iowa and that is New Jersey. Um, Missouri is not in this picture at all. And there was one picture here that I saw that was just absolutely freaking amazing picture if I could fucking find it again. But there's, it, there's one time in, this sh in the history of all the um, Iowa class ships right here. The only time all four sister ships steamed together was the 7th of June of 1954. From front to rear it's Iowa Wisconsin, Missouri, New Jersey. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. The only time in history that all four of these magnificent sisters ever steamed in fucking formation. Which is nuts. And of course, like, you know, like I said, it goes through all the different time periods and shit, which is quite impressive. Quite impressive shit. And of course, there's also another awesome bit here too about her recommissioning back in the 80s. When Reagan gave a speech, he said that she's gray, she had her face lifted, but she's still in the prime of life, the gallant lady New Jersey. And there's a picture of um, Captain William Fogarty presenting Ronald Reagan with a piece of the ship's teak wood decking that was replaced during the renovation. That's a really awesome fucking picture. And of course, there was um, a few. Another picture I thought was really interesting was the fact of they were replacing the center barrel from turret two because that gun, the original gun that was there, was destroyed. And that was actually the first time the guns had been replaced on the New Jersey since 1954, since the overhaul 54. And there's a close-up view of them sliding the new gun in. That had to be some pretty meticulous shit. And of course, they've got all the information about like all of her captains, which is awesome. And of course, appendix, you know, designed in New Jersey. And of course, these awesome fucking line drawings. Now these are what make the book awesome. Especially if you're a model maker like me, because now I want to get me a model of the New Jersey and I want to build the Black Dragon. I want to build the Black Dragon so fucking bad. So yeah, in conclusion, what do I think about this awesome fucking book? Paul Stillwell did a fantastic job with this. This is absolutely a must. It's really well researched. Illustrations in it are just beautiful. The photographs are beautiful. And it's definitely a book you must have if you're going to be a model maker. Or if you love naval history and love battleship. You know, this is actually two. This is the second one of three illustrated history books he wrote like I said he wrote this one first and that one later so yeah hope you guys enjoyed that review of Battleship New Jersey and if you guys have any questions or comments about anything put them in the comment section below and I'll get back with you and um, if you're new to the channel like the shit I fucking do hit that fucking subscribe button hit that damn notification bell and until next time, this is Commodore Urban saying a smooth seas and clear skies. Happy sailing with you. God bless you all. Take care. Stay safe. Be yourselves. And catch on a warm tree wound where hell anyone knows. And Jesus, good love, love you. And so long.
Goodbye.